Becoming a blockchain developer is one of the fastest ways to change your career and land a job in a high paying industry. Because it's no secret that blockchain is one of the highest paying fields in tech, but how much can you actually make as a blockchain developer? Well, that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video today as a blockchain developer myself with years of industry experience and somebody who's helped lots of people land their first blockchain developer jobs all the way up to you know CTO level programmers. I'm gonna talk about everything, like how much you can actually make in your first blockchain developer job as an entry role, multi six figures, and even up to seven figures. Yes, you heard that right million dollar blockchain opportunities for developers so before we get into that you know if you're new around here hey i'm gregory and on this channel i turn you into a blockchain master so if that's something that you're interested in then smash that like button down below for the youtube algorithm and subscribe to this channel and if you like this video today and you're ready to take action and change your career and become a highly paid blockchain developer then definitely head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today all right, so let's talk about how much money you can actually make as a blockchain developer. So I'm gonna start off with some quick statistics, okay? On a website like ZipRecruiter.com that shows that the national average salary for blockchain developers is about $150,000 per year, okay? So I know this is just one website, just one set of data, but let's quickly compare that to other software development fields like mobile developers, which is a national average of $107,000 per year, and full stack developers, which is a national average of $109,000 per year. So blockchain is about 50% more lucrative on average. But now you can also see that the you know the mean average can be kind of deceiving because there's a high concentration of people down here, and then a big spread of people making well into the six figures and beyond. So let's break that down by category and start off with you know how much could you realistically make at your first blockchain development job? All right, so your first blockchain developer job, your compensation is actually going to depend upon really three main things. The first thing is your actual skill level, like what can you do? Uh, number two is how hard are you actually willing to work and do things that you're not comfortable with? And number three is really like kind of where you live or where the source of your income is coming from, okay? And for this reason, you know, your compensation range can be pretty wide because honestly, that first blockchain developer job could be anywhere from kind of almost like a borderline internship all the way to a solid you know, junior developer role with some quick upward mobility. And for these reasons, I would say that you could expect to make somewhere between $60,000 and $120,000 per year at your first blockchain developer job. And now that's a pretty big range, okay, because the upper end is twice as big as the lower end and who doesn't want, you know, a 100K plus job for their first job. So I'll give you some things to look for in yourself to determine where you actually fit on that spectrum. Because, you know, like I said, who doesn't want to make 100K plus for their first job? Well, you definitely can do that. But if you're going to, that comes with a certain level of expectations and responsibilities, okay? Because before I said, you know, your skill level and also how willing, how hard you are willing to work are two big factors in determining this. So if you want a 100K job, you have to meet 100K expectations, which means you need to be independent and you need to be going for the throat and always learning new things and be super dependable that people are just gonna count on you to get stuff done, even if you don't know how to do it. And that's how you could break six figures in your first blockchain job. But now let's go back down to the lower end of that range, okay? This is more of a situation where you're just trying to get your foot in the door, you're trying to get paid to learn, and you don't necessarily want those type of pressures or expectations on you. This is where, you know, your first job is almost like a borderline internship. All right, now say this, and if I was starting over from scratch and I was trying to get my first blockchain developer job, I would focus on getting that first job as fast as possible. And I honestly wouldn't focus too much on what my salary was. Here's why. Because if you take action and get your first job as fast as you can, you're going to be able to use that as experience and leverage to get your next job or increase your pay at your current position. The experience is going to be tremendously invaluable. And so as long as you can get something that meets your financial needs, that gets you working in blockchain, then that's going to be worth it. Even if it's below the salary expectations that I just talked about. You know, let's say that you were working as a barista, you know, at a coffee shop, for example, and you can make, you know, just a little bit more than what you're making now, but you're not doing that and you're on a path to blockchain, then that could even be worth it in that case. All right, so that's what you can do at your entry level position. Now let's talk about how do you break past $100,000 per year or start earning a six-figure salary. Now, previously, I said you can do this in your first role, but you have to meet the expectations and criteria that I outline in this section, okay? So most likely, this is going to be for people with some experience already or advanced beginners, right, who are willing to jump in and take the plunge. But most likely, if you look at our graph here, these people down here, this 19% of jobs at $105,000 to $115,000 per year, all the way up to one hundred twenty-three. dollars you know, that's about a quarter of all the developers. How do you get to this spot? Well, what you can really do is do a self-assessment, all right, and determine, do you meet a certain set of criteria that could make you worth this much? Because at the end of the day, how much you're getting paid is how much value you're bringing to the table. So what does that value look like in a six-figure developer? 
Well, basically, you know, you need to be able to solve problems on your own. So if someone comes to you with a problem that, that requires a blockchain solution, you can tell them exactly how to do it. And then you can also implement it yourself. You can write the code to do it. So you have to have solid foundations and solidity and whatever programming languages are required to do that. Also, someone in this income range doesn't have to be actively managed. Okay, if you're a part of a team or you work on some type of manager, they can give you the outcome they're looking for with some bullet points, maybe in a ticketing system, you can just pull that ticket and you can actually deliver the result. Okay. And another part of this person is that you don't ever say, well, I just can't do that, okay? It's not really, it's can't, it's I'm gonna figure out how to do it, okay? And people who are usually in their first job they kind of get overwhelmed with having to deliver on things. And so you need to be past that threshold where you can always be resourceful and determine whether something can realistically be done or not. And if it can, you, you just got to make it happen. And really, those are all the criteria that I would say to get into this income range. You're not really at the level yet where you start to have to actively manage other developers or become a master architect or anything like that. You just have to be really solid, know your stuff, and be able to deliver actual results in a pretty fast turnaround. All right, so now let's talk about the next tier of compensation beyond this, because you can see the gap you know, it's pretty big here. How do you start making like $200,000 per year plus? All right, we're not gonna get to the seven figure stuff yet. I'll talk about that in the next section, but how can you make multi six figures? Well, ultimately you have to go back to what I was saying before, which is you're paid for the value that you're bringing to the table. So you have to be worth multiple six figures. So let's just think about it this way. Could they hire somebody? Could they pay two people $100,000 a piece and actually, you know, do better than hiring you? Well, you have to be able to be worth more than those two people combined. So how do you do that? So there's lots of different things that I'm going to get into in this section. But one of the primary things is that you can make very good decisions. Because if you put two people together who are just pretty good, okay, they still may not make the best architectural decisions. And if you can make better decisions that can save the company or the project, whatever it is, time and money down the road, and you can do it faster and do it right the first time, that's tremendously valuable. Because if you hear about the, like the mythical 10x developer, okay, it's not necessarily somebody who can sit there and type, you know, code 10 times faster and ship more lines of code 10x more. That, that's a useless metric. It's really about much more sophisticated conversations with people who are actually involved in creating the software and saying, hey, we should be doing this, not doing this. And if you can provide that kind of value, it's worth way more than two average developers combined. All right. And so basically, like in this income tier, you need to be able to make big, high level architectural decisions, okay, more so than an average developer could make. You need to be able to help design the actual products themselves. You need to be able to de delegate tasks to other people as well, where other people are probably going to be working underneath you or where you have some sort of seniority over them where, you know, the buck sort of stops with you. You need to, be able to lead teams of other developers, okay, and probably also aid in hiring new developers, maybe participating in interviews or maybe reaching out to networks where you can help bring other people onto the team. That's going to be a big value there. And another big piece of this is in addition to you just knowing how to write code, you've got to have a next level of like best practices for that code. So it's particularly with blockchain, you know, understanding the nuances of security issues with smart contracts and also blockchain protocols, having a deeper level of that type of understanding is going to be tremendously valuable here because, you know, security vulnerabilities are notorious inside of crypto projects, and you're probably going to be working with security auditors at some point. This may be even be a security auditing role itself. But the more time and trouble and back and forth that you can save in that process, if you can prevent, you know, a multi-million dollar bug from happening, then that's obviously going to be a value proposition for someone to pay you a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to prevent those types of things. All right, so now let's go way beyond the chart. So even see in our screen here and talk about how can you make seven figures as a blockchain developer, okay? Because despite what you might think, it is possible. Because I do see these opportunities pop up from time to time. And I was looking on Twitter the other day, and I did see this one come up uh, with Scott, who works on the Canto project. And this total expected compensation could be one to three million dollars per year. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit. It's got a $360,000 base compensation and the extras added on top of that could be one to $3 million per year. I don't have exact transparency on how that's paid out, if it's with tokens from project or what that is, but let's talk about how you can even make a seven figure salary in the first place. This is just one example of several that I see floating around like this. They are rare, but they do come up. So the first thing is, you know, making seven figures as a blockchain developer is always gonna have a certain amount of risk associated with that. What I mean is, there's going to be that upside potential, but there won't be a guarantee on exactly what you're going to make at the end of the year. When you have these type of compensation packages, it's an attractive offer with a, you know, a pretty big upside, but there's no guarantee on exactly what that's going to be, you know, in one year's time. And other part of this is that there's going to be multiple factors in play that influence the outcome of this. One could just be, you know, chance about how the products work in the marketplace, but the other 
you know, many times is to incentivize you to be really strong contributor to the project so that you are really putting out a lot of work and helping them achieve their goals to where you could be fairly compensated this amount of money. Because at the end of the day, like I was saying before, if you're going to make seven figures, you have to bring seven figures with the value of the table. And this is a great way, way to incentivize that. All right. So how would you know if you're even qualified for something like this? Well, they give you some pretty good indications in the post here. They say you must be a level above your peers. So people need to just look at you and be like, that guy's a really good developer or girl, you know, depending on who you are. A uh, fast, smart, communicative, and collaborative. You need to come up with new novel ideas and how to implement blockchain protocols, not just copy and pasting what everybody else has done. And you need to be able to ship things, you know, pretty fast one at a time. Okay, so what I would say about this role is that it's pretty much a lot of the same characteristics I talked about before, having a mastery of the programming languages, being able to work with other people, manage the people, come with really unique solutions. But on top of that, you really need to be a cut of the rest and other people need to be affirming that you are that. And because this has so much upside, there's going to be a ton of expectations placed upon you as well. Because there's going to be a ton of temptation once you're a de developer to get in a job that just pays you pretty well. And, you know, you can kind of cruise at your job and all that type of stuff, have a really cushy developer job. That's not what this is going to be. You have to be an innovator, a hustler, super smart, and be willing to chase after this care that's going to be dangled you know, in front of you. And you have to be willing to do whatever it takes in order to get the job done in order to be worth something like this. All right, so those are some of the different salary ranges that you can make as a blockchain developer and what you'd be required to do uh, at each of those levels. Now, I want to give you a quick bonus hack before I wrap up the video today. How can you increase your income, you know, quickly, even if you're a beginning developer and make 100K, you know, pretty fast? So let's say that you got an entry-level blockchain developer job and you were making like $75,000 per year, okay? Well, you could do some extra work on the side to increase that income past 100K, okay? So if you got freelancing work on the side, and let's say that you just made $500 per week for a year, okay, on average, well, if you add that to your $75,000 per year job, that's gonna get you to that 100K level. And there's lots of other things that you can do on the side to build your own DeFi applications and blockchain applications. And you can also do things like hunt for bug bounties, okay? Now, this is going to be less of a reliable stream of income, but the upside for these are, are big. So you can get on a platform like immunefy.com and look for, you know, blockchain uh, you know, protocols and their vulnerabilities, and they'll pay you handsomely to find, you know, vulnerabilities in this. So let's say that you found one that would pay you like $100,000 disclose it. Well, I mean, think about what a crazy windfall that would be, okay? There's no guarantee you're going to find that, but the opportunities are definitely out there. And at the end of the day, this is going to make you a better developer for understanding this type of stuff. All right, so that's an overview of how much you can actually make as a blockchain developer from a beginner all the way up to a super advanced developer who can make a million dollars per year or more in this industry. You know, this is absolutely crazy space to be in. And so if you like this video and you want to take action on exactly what I'm talking about today, of course, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps videos out so them up and learn about blockchain. But definitely if you want to level up your coding skills to break into the industry, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you'd like those and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to go for the throat and land your first 100K job as fast as possible, then definitely head on over to dappyversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You can start today. All right, so that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.